Minister of State for Ethics and Integrity, the Honorable Simon Lakoto, religious leaders and members of the Interreligious Council of Uganda, heads of anti-corruption institutions in Uganda, permanent secretaries and accounting officers, staff of anti-corruption agencies, colleagues from the diplomatic corps, civil society organizations and media, invited guests and friends, all protocols observed. I am honored to speak to you this morning on behalf of the Development Partners Accountability Working Group on the occasion of International Anti-Corruption Day. Every December 9th since 2005, all over the world, people gather to take a moment to promote awareness about corruption and to reflect on progress that has been made. We also consider areas where more effort is needed in the fight against corruption. I am mindful that today's event takes place against the backdrop of continuing efforts to combat COVID-19, as well as ongoing election campaigning. These are both critical issues for Uganda's future that demand resources and attention in the short term. Nevertheless, we cannot lose sight of the critical importance of anti-corruption efforts to Uganda's long-term success. Today's gathering provides an opportunity for each of us to reflect on what we can do individually and what our organizations can do collectively to eliminate corruption and seek accountability for the benefit of all Ugandans. I commend civil society and the media who work tirelessly to keep citizens informed and who play a fundamental role in the transparency of public spending. I also commend the efforts of anti-corruption institutions in Uganda, such as the Inspectorate of Government, the Auditor General, the Anti-Corruption Court, and others who fight corruption daily. The Transparency International Corruption Perception Index of 2019 ranked Uganda 137th out of 180 countries, with a score of 28 out of 100 points. While this is an improvement by two points from the 2018 index, it demonstrates that there's still much work to be done on corruption and accountability in Uganda. Earlier this year, Uganda's third national development plan, NDP3, was launched. We are glad to see that accountability and anti-corruption featured prominently in several programs. The NDP3 recognizes that corruption is one of the key obstacles to Uganda's development. And although the country has established several accountability institutions, such as those I just mentioned, and passed extensive legislation, there is weak enforcement of the laws and poor accountability. This undermines performance of public sector institutions and limits their ability to respond to the needs of citizens. The NDP3 further notes that integrity and public awareness are crucial to create a sense of responsibility, ownership, and accountability of development programs. It is therefore promising that the NDP3 recognizes the important role that citizens and civil society play in fighting corruption, and we welcome the government's efforts to partner with non-state actors to fight corruption and promote accountability. Several of the findings from the 2018-2019 Government of Uganda National Audit are instructive in the fight against corruption. The audit showed a worrying 226% increase in the use of unapproved supplementary budgets since fiscal year 2015-2016. According to the audit's findings, 1.15 trillion shillings, or $407 million, was spent during fiscal year 2018-2019 without the mandatory parliamentary approval, thus highlighting a lack of parliamentary oversight of government funds, which could contribute to increased corruption. It is also worth noting that these supplementary allocations are primarily for classified expenditures, whose details are unknown and cannot be audited by the Office of the Auditor General. This further limits transparency and fuels corruption in Uganda. Regarding the extractive sector, I would like to commend Uganda, the private sector, and civil society on officially becoming an Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, EITI, implementing country, a step encouraged by many of Uganda's development partners. Uganda's membership means improved standards that demonstrate commitment to transparency and accountability in the sector. Compliance with the formal EITI standards can lead to improvements in the revenue collection process and can enhance trust and stability in a volatile sector. If Uganda implements EITI standards and practices correctly, this will be an important step in the right direction, fueling economic growth and prosperity. We recognize the government of Uganda has placed considerable em emphasis on institutional reform to combat corruption. In recent decades, institutions and legislation have been put in place to strengthen accountability and fight corruption. However, resistance to effective accountability remains strong. 
Even if many corruption cases are identified, low prosecution and low conviction rates undermine the laws in place and those implementing them. Corruption can also undermine electoral processes. The donor community remains concerned by the level of voter bribery. A study on campaign funding by the Alliance for Finance Monitoring documented that the cost of contesting for a political seat has risen so high that to become a member of parliament in 2021, a person would require no less than 500 million shillings, or almost 140,000 US dollars. This amount is staggering when you consider that just a little over a year ago before the pandemic, Uganda's per capita gross domestic product was $800, which re represented an increase. Unfortunately, vote buying through provision of money, goods, or services is a widespread practice. Not only are many aspirants offering bribes, but also many citizens are expecting and even requesting them. Both acts compromise the democratic process and are disrespectful and dismissive of citizens and their interests. The culture of selling democratic rights is a form of corruption that needs to be rejected, and one way that all Ugandan citizens can step up against corruption in the next few weeks is to reject voter bribery. Ugandan taxpayer funds are meant to improve lives through the provision of public goods, not to secure a vote. Every bribe taken means less money for life-saving drugs for hospitals or for teacher salaries to staff Ugandan schools. I would like to mention the fact that the position of the Inspector General of Government, IGG, fell vacant in July 2020 when the second term of Justice Irene Mulyagonja expired. We have concerns that in the absence of an Inspector General, the Office of the Inspectorate of Government, the IG, can neither undertake new investigations nor prosecute new matters or finalize pending cases. Development partners call on His Excellency the President to appoint swiftly a new Inspector General of Government as a demonstrable sign of commitment to the anti-corruption fight. While incremental change to improve the processes, systems, and technical skills in the institutions fighting corruption is important, and an improved legislative and policy framework can provide a more conducive environment, there is also a deep culture of corruption that perpetuates across the public sector. The culture of corruption will end only when people begin to reject corruption and reject those offering a share in its proceeds, when people stop inviting those involved in corruption to their social events or doing business with them, when citizens undertake their duty and report corruption when they see it, when religious institutes start calling more forcefully for moral behavior among their members, and when the government holds everyone who engages in corruption accountable. Only then will strengthen anti-corruption systems, processes, and institutions be able to achieve results. Alas, the personal costs of denouncing corruption have become too high for many individuals. When so many appear to be serving their own interests, individuals are less likely to reject the culture of corruption. Corruption in Uganda has become a collective action problem that requires everyone to adopt the mindset that corruption simply is not acceptable. I hope events here today in Uganda and worldwide serve as a reminder of our individual and collective obligations. Development partners, civil society, government and independent institutions, including businesses and religious organizations, will have the most impact if we all work together to tackle corruption in Uganda. As development partners, we pledge to support national and local institutions that fight corruption and strengthen their capacity to deal with corruption, from audits and oversight to public administration and prosecution. We also pledge to advocate for the enabling environment needed to achieve sustainable development goals. The United States and the United Kingdom are partnering to strengthen accountability institutions and increase citizen participation in the fight against corruption in Uganda. The U.S. Agency for International Development's health program is building the capacity of leaders at national and local levels to provide effective oversight in the health se sector. This includes strengthening public financial management systems and policies, as well as empowering communities to demand transparency and accountability in the use of resources at the local levels. Through the German and European Union-funded Strengthening Governance and Civil Society Program, implemented by the German Cooperation for International Cooperation, development partners are working to ensure that selected state and civil society actors in Uganda are increasingly able to fight corruption and work towards fulfillment of good governance and human rights principles, including transparency, accountability, efficiency, and effective civic 
society-oriented in administration and political participation. This is done through support to government and accountability issues and CSOs at the national and regional levels. The work of anti-corruption civil society organizations is critical in helping Uganda to overcome this problem by promoting collective action against corruption and advocating change in the way that Ugandans view and tackle corruption. We need collective responsibility for strength and partnership for all stakeholders on anti-corruption and accountability, both between the state actors and non-state actors. A collective action problem such as corruption requires a collective response. Thank you very much for taking part in this important dialogue. I hope the rest of today's discussions are productive and I wish you much success.